Page 134. Activity 2. Previewing Vocabulary. Nouns. Chopsticks. Hug. Misunderstanding. Title of a person. Utensils. Variation. Verbs. Bow. Illustrate. Adjectives. Appropriate. Embarrassing. Insulted. Page 135. Activity 3. Taking notes on similarities and differences. 1. Maybe you've noticed that many Americans use people's first names very freely, even if they've just met someone. Some people even call their bosses by their first names. In contrast, people in most other cultures are more formal. Maybe you've noticed that many Americans use people's first names very freely, even if they've just met someone. Some people even call their bosses by their first names. In contrast, people in most other cultures are more formal. 2. In Egypt, you should leave some food on your plate at the end of a meal. However, Bolivians expect visitors to eat everything on their plates. In Egypt, you should leave some food on your plate at the end of a meal. However, Bolivians expect visitors to eat everything on their plates. 3. Bolivians expect visitors to eat everything on their plates, and Americans also think that a clean plate means you were satisfied with the food. Bolivians expect visitors to eat everything on their plates, and Americans also think that a clean plate means you were satisfied with the food. 4. Many Japanese people bow when they greet each other while people from Thailand prefer to hold their hands in a prayer position. Many Japanese people bow when they greet each other, while people from Thailand prefer to hold their hands in a prayer position. 5. In the United States, greetings often involve some sort of touching, such as a handshake, a hug, or a kiss, if the people know each other very well and most Western countries are similar to the United States in this way. In the United States, greetings often involve some sort of touching, such as a handshake, a hug, or a kiss, if the people know each other very well. And most Western countries are similar to the United States in this way. Page 135. Activity 4. Taking Notes. Part 1. Good afternoon, class. I want to start today by telling you a little story. Once there was a young woman from Mexico named Consuela who came to New York to work. And she got a job at a factory owned by a man from Taiwan. One day, when Consuela came to work, her Taiwanese boss handed her a red envelope. She looked inside and saw $50. And what do you think she did? She became very upset and threw the envelope back at him. Of course, her boss was totally shocked. Can you guess why? Well, he had given her the red envelope and the money because it was the Chinese New Year. And on the Chinese New Year, it's traditional to give money to young single people for good luck. But Consuela didn't know about this Chinese custom. She thought her boss was asking her for sex. Naturally, she was very insulted and refused to take the money. Now, what does this story show us? What's the point? Yes? It shows that an action can have totally opposite meanings in different cultures. Like in this case, the boss thought he was being generous, but Consuela was insulted. Exactly. Every culture has its own rules for appropriate and inappropriate behavior. And serious misunderstandings, like the one with Consuela and her boss, can occur if we don't know other people's cultural rules. 
Um, to illustrate this point, I'd like to offer some examples from four areas. Uh, first, the way people greet each other in different cultures. Okay, uh, second, the way they use names and titles. Third, the way people eat. And uh, finally, the way they exchange gifts. All right? So, um, let's start with greeting customs. I mean, how people behave when they say hello. First of all, I'm sure you know that in the United States, greetings often involve some sort of touching, such as a handshake, a hug, or a kiss if the people know each other very well. And most Western countries are similar to the United States in this way. Also, did you know that people from France kiss almost everyone on the cheek, even strangers? On the other hand, people from most Asian countries don't usually feel as comfortable touching in public. I mean, it's normal for businessmen to shake hands, that's true, but many traditional Japanese prefer a bow. While people from Thailand, for example, normally hold their, normally hold their hands together in a kind of prayer position, like this, you see? So, imagine what would happen if an American was invited to someone's home in Japan or Thailand, and he or she tried to hug the host. <laughs> it would be very embarrassing, right? And yet, that behavior would be perfectly acceptable in the United States or Latin America. Um, okay, now, um, another behavior that differs from culture to culture is the use of names. Maybe you've noticed that many Americans use people's first names very freely, even if they've just met someone. Some people even call their bosses by their first names. In contrast, people in most other cultures are more formal and prefer to use family names to address people, like Mr. Martinez or Ms. Schultz. In some countries, like Korea, for example, it's polite to use a person's title or position with their family name. So you'd say, for example, Teacher Park or Manager Kim. Page 137. Activity 6. Taking Notes. Part 2. Now, moving on, the third area I want to look at is eating customs. I don't mean the foods that people like to eat in different countries, but rather some of the behaviors that are connected with eating. Um, one of these is the use of utensils. You probably know that people in many Asian cultures use chopsticks, while in the West they usually use forks, knives, and spoons. Or, for example, in parts of India, and in traditional Arab families too, it's customary to eat with your fingers or to use a piece of bread to scoop up food. Another example is that in some cultures, eating everything on your plate is impolite. In Egypt, for example, you should leave some food in your dish at the end of the meal in order to show that your hosts were generous and gave you more than enough to eat. However, people from Bolivia in South America expect visitors to eat everything on their plates, and Americans also think a clean plate means you were satisfied with the food. Um, finally, the last area of behavior that I want to mention today is gift-giving. The rules of gift-giving can be very complicated, and it can be embarrassing if you don't know them. For example, in the United States, if you're invited to someone's home for dinner, you can bring wine or flowers or a small gift from your country. But Americans generally don't give gifts in business situations. On the other hand, the Japanese like many other people in Asia, give gifts often, especially if they want to thank someone, like a teacher or a doctor, for their kindness. In Japan, the tradition of gift-giving is very ancient, and there are detailed rules for everything, from the color of the wrapping paper to the time of the gift presentation. Another interesting fact about gift-giving is that many cultures have strict rules about gifts you should not give. Um, for example, never give yellow flowers to people from Iran, or they'll think you hate them. Uh, so, to conclude, I hope all these examples will help you to understand my main point today, which is that each culture has its own unique rules for social behavior. 
We should never assume that our way of doing things is the only way or the best way. Learning about other people's customs is part of being good international citizens. Page 140. Focused listening. Blending consonants. When one word ends in a consonant sound and the next word begins with the same consonant sound, the two consonant sounds are blended or pronounced as one sound. There is no pause between the two words. Example. Black plus cat equals black cat. Big plus girl equals big girl. Famous plus singer equals famous singer. Page 140. Activity 1. Pronouncing names with blended consonants. 1. Alan Norton. 2. Pat Thompson. 3. Philip Pearson. 4. Dick Cantor. 5. Brad Davis. 6. Meg Gray. 7. Tom Madison. 8. Peter Ramsey. 9. Val Lewis. 10. Trish Sherman. 11. Cass Saxon. 12. Seth Thayer.